sword war. What's going on YouTube? Legend here once again, this time at your game with some more Honkai Star Rail. And this time, I want to talk about Jing Liu. Yes, I want to talk about Jing Liu again because she is coming up. You guys saw her in the, in the live stream there, 1.4 live stream. She's coming up, oh, what, a week and a half now. We're getting really close. We're getting really close to Jing Liu. And I can't wait. And for those of you who can't wait either, well, let me tell you how to prep for her and, and get ready, get the account ready so you can max her out as soon as she get here when you guys are ready to pull. So, as I'm about to tell you all the different things what you can do to prepare for her and kind of give you a mini guide here, um, I do want to give out a warning, okay? Because she is not out yet. So a lot of the information I'm giving might be unofficial. And since that information is unofficial, you do not want to make any drastic decisions when it comes to the prep that I give you, right? When I say drastic decisions, I mean things like, all right, let's say I say, oh, well, she's gonna go real good with the Herder Store light cone, okay? Which is true, of course. Uh, doesn't mean that you go ahead and, and put all, go get the light cone now and pull your stuff into get all the supers in positions. And then you know when she comes out, all of a sudden we find out that, oh, maybe she has this light cone that might work a little bit better. Or, you know, oh, I, Actually, I, ha I got lucky and I got her early, so I have a couple extra things to get her light cone. Maybe I might do that and you get it. And then you just use all your resources on a light cone that you're not going to use. You know, things like that. I'd say when it comes to those permanent type of resources, I'd say you don't use them until the character is here and you pulled for them and they're on your account and they do, you know that they do what they said they were going to do before. All right. So I just want to get that out of the way because uh, I don't want to see people doing anything else. I'm like, oh man, I spent all these resources on this and I ended up using this instead. I don't want to see that. All right. But let's get into the, the, the bare bones here. This will be the last you see of me. So when it comes to Jing Liu, in terms of prepping for her, there's going to be obviously there's going to be certain materials you're going to need. So let's get down to the materials. You're going to need enough books to i'd say you know i recommend to bring it up to 80 because that's usually say your dps is the people who are dealing the damage you want them to be the high as high level as possible so they have the necessary level to do the most damage on the team of course right um the higher the level the better they can do against other high level enemies to bring her to 80 you're gonna need about 290 travel guys those purple books and about 3 million credits in order to just bring her from 0 to 90 and that also includes traces and so on and so forth traces are going to go will make that number go up and down but a good number to go for is about 3 million credits in order to take it from from 0 to, to 80 and get a good amount of uh, traces on her all right so if you're looking for a target number for that then there you go and then also too don't forget the light cone if you don't have a light cone already ready for her for a five star light cone it's going to take about nine hundred thousand credits and for a four star light cone it's going to take about seven hundred thousand credits so if you want to add that up you want to have 3.7 uh 3.9 k uh sorry not k uh 3.7 million 3.9 million credits in order to to, to get um, everything leveled up and stuff like that so so if you're looking at your your credits and you're like oh well you know only got three then you might need to put that up a little bit if you need to level up a light cone only got two so on and so forth maybe you want to start farming for some credits also for a light cone too to do a light cone it takes about 165 refined aether these things right here it takes about 165 of those to raise up a five star light cone all the way up to 80 and then for a four star one it's going to take about 132 to do that right i mean that's not including you know the smaller ones right here same thing when i was talking about the experience books i'm not to count these little ones right there so you know if you can get an equivalent to that then you know you're good to go right there in terms of the actual destruction trace materials um, i'm going to do is i'm going to refer you to over to a site that i use so here's a site that I use called Star Rail Station. I'll put the link in the description. Um, hopefully I don't forget that. This site I use in order to plan out the different resources that I have and that I need in order to level up whatever said character, right? And it goes on for official information, so it's not, so Jing Liu's not gonna be on here, so I'm using Don Hung in place. So as you can see, I have everything checked off right here. You know, I got enough Mora. Oh, Mora, hmm. I mean, not more. It's, I got enough credits. I got enough experience books. This doesn't really count because that's for Don Hung. 
I got enough destruction materials right there. See, based on the one I'm doing here is, you know, I'm doing basic tech up to four, which I don't need to do, but I got skill 10, ultimate nine, talent 10. In order to do that, I need 114 of the purple pieces, you know, 69 of the blue. Nice. And an 18 of the green. And then I also need that for this right here. So these are gonna be the same because they're both destruction. So I use Donghun as a placeholder right there. But once she's out, I'm sure the site will update and put Jingli on here. So if you guys wanna use this site in order to figure out what traces you're going to do and basically kind of plan around that, then you're good to go. And as you see, I have other characters on there. I plan on, you know, fully maxing out my Kafka and my Sealy because those are my, my favorite DPSs that I have right now. So that I can help you guys out when it comes to the planning in terms of the material. So enough with the materials. Now let's talk about light cones. She's an instruction character, so she has many different options when it comes to light cones. There's her light cone, right, which is a pretty good light cone, right? It's a pretty good light cone. Um, I looked at leaks too. There's a little bit of mistranslation that appears when it comes to like the description of it. So, because that did, it confused me a lot because it's talked about having additional attack and it doesn't do an additional attack or whatever. Um, we'll have to wait till the original information comes out when it comes to the light cone itself. So I won't go into detail about what the light cone does. But it's a signature light cone. So obviously we know that it's going to be her best in slot because that's how it's been with all the other limited five stars that came out. Uh, they're essentially their signature is the best, right? So we can assume that's going to be the same here. But not everybody's going to be able to get the signature light cone, which is OK, right? A lot of you probably shouldn't get that because it's going to cost you money, most likely, right? Unless you've saved up enough. So what are your other options? Well, she has other options because a different discretion character that we got before Don Hong was Blade. Blade didn't go good with a lot of the light cones. Well, Jing Liu is not the case. And same thing when it came to Don Hong too. She's gonna go good with them because she scales off of attack. Now she does get a lot of attack. So because she gets a lot of attack already, you know, attack percentage is good, but damage percent is going to be better. So light cones that give you some damage percent is going to be really good. So we can look at something like this right here, the Herder Store Light Cone, which is gonna be an excellent pick for her, right? I already said that earlier. It gives attack at um, S1 right here, it gives attack eight times four, it's gonna be 32% attack at S1. Then you do 16% times four, then it goes up even more right there, 64%. And then you also get another damage bonus if their weakness is broken. Phenomenal, great stuff right there. So it gives you attack, it gives you a damage bonus, all right? But then we got Clara's Light Cone, which I I might like more. It's gonna take some testing, but I do like this one right here because what it does is it gives you 20% attack right off the bat. And then when you get hit or kill an enemy, which honestly, she does some AOE, she does some, and some high damage too. So those mobs, she's going, she is going to be killing them, right? She is gonna be killing people. So she's gonna be able to get this passive off, plus she's a destruction character, so she has a higher chance of getting hit too. So you're gonna be able to get this to proc quite a bit. She's going to recover some HP, and she's draining HP too, so that's a great thing. And she's going to get a damage bonus when she does do proc that passive, right? So I kinda like Clara's Light Cone better, but it's harder to get than the Herder Store Light Cone. So whatever you whatever you decide to pick right there, that's good. I'm not officially ranking the Light Cones when it comes to this, but just look to see what you have, what you have access to, and then you can use that right there. But these are both five-star Light Cones. You also have options to use other Light Cones, right? I'd say the best four-star Light Cone would be Arlen's right here, because guess what? It gives you damage bonus right off the bat. So that's gonna be, maybe that might be her best four star right there. Another good one is the battle pass one right here. The battle pass one, um, it gives you attack. It restores some HP too, which is good. And the other ones I'd say are kind of copium. Like for example, this one right here, this is not a good pick. This is not a good pick right here because it gives you a lot of crit rate, but she gets a lot of crit rate in her kit. She gets a whole lot of crit rate, up to 50% crit rate when she goes into her, her um, I can't remember the name of the state. Okay, her special transmigration state. That's what it's called, okay? When she goes into her special transmigration state, she's gonna get a lot of crit rate. So this crit rate, even though this crit rate alone isn't going to cap over cap you, but if you build her correctly, this is just gonna be, weak. It's, it's not gonna be doing anything. You're gonna get the 60% attack and then that's gonna be it. Then we're talking about this right here. It gives you a little bit of attack. 
Um, you can be able to S5 it pretty easily because this is the one that you get from the Forgotten Hall and such. Um, and you can get from the, the uh, weekly bosses. At S5, it'll give you 20% attack. And if you have a way to um, put burn or, or bleed on the enemy, then you can take advantage of the extra damage that it does give. So that can work out pretty well if you can take advantage of that. But who is Jing Liu gonna go good with that can put burn or bleed on the enemy? Not too many people. I'm gonna let you know. Not not too many. You're gonna put Luka with her? It doesn't make sense to do that. You don't it just doesn't make sense. But who does put burn is Asta. So if you use Asta as the harmony unit with her, then maybe you can take advantage of this one right here. Who knows, right? Um, I do think it's a little copium because it's too situational. But if you don't have anything else, then what can you do? So those when it comes to the light cones right there. So those are good light cones to pick when it comes to that. If you have one of these light cones and are not completely leveled up, I usually advise not to level them up completely until you have Jing Liu in your hands, okay? When you have that, then, you know, take your pick on the best option you have, and there you go, right? But, you know, just take a look at the options that you have right now, okay? And now we'll go to trace priorities right here. This is Yang Qing right here, so obviously we're not looking at her actual traces. But when it comes to her traces, in my opinion, of what you're gonna prioritize her traces are gonna be, so when you're trying to set and see how much destruction materials that you do need, I would say her skill is number one, right? Because most of her damage is gonna be coming from her skill. Then her burst, that's the second sort of big source of her damage right there. Her talent, because her talent is essentially the, this transmigration state that she's gonna be going in, so it's gonna kind of raise the stats of that, how much attack she gets from going into that state and how much crit rate she does get from going into that state. So I'd say I'd put that right there, number three, and then her basic, you can you can neglect because you really shouldn't be using your basic attacks with her. I would say that I would prefer, I would level those instead. And when it comes to all the secondary stats and stuff like that, like crit damage, so on and so forth, then, you know, definitely get those up. You know, she gets some speed in there um, from how she is now. So you definitely want to do that too, okay? So that's that. Then we'll talk about relics. Now, these are the relics that I have set for her right now, for me, for my account. But when it comes to her relics, she wants, obviously, the ice set, right? The glacier set. Because what's gonna do is it's gonna give her some ice damage and it's going to give her some more crit damage. And she's gonna be getting a lot of crit damage, which is magnifique, it's beautiful, it's wonderful. Um, that's obvious, right, for the four piece. But if you can't get that four piece, which is which is a lot of folks aren't gonna be able to do, what can you do? Well, you have other options. Now this is gonna sound crazy. But for those of you those of you who, who who've been thinking quite a bit, you might have noticed there might be another set that might good go good for her for a four piece set. And for those of you who know, that quantum set, that quantum set is actually going to go good with her, right? Because yeah, she's not doing anything from the quantum damage, right? So the two piece does nothing for you. But the wearer deals damage to the target enemy ignores 10% of their defense. Jing Liu is somebody who gets a lot of attack. She gets a lot of crit damage. She gets a lot of crit rate. She gets a lot of different stats, right? That helps her deal a lot of damage. So, so one of the big way, one of the biggest ways in order for her to get her to do even more damage is to take down the enemy defenses so those stats affect the enemy more. So, with a, a set that takes away from the defense, that's gonna be great. And if they're weak to quantum, then an additional 10% defense gets ignored. That is great, and it's actually gonna hit really hard when she's wearing this if the enemy is weak to quantum. Especially if you have Silver Wolf or something like that, then you're good to go with that. I like the ice set more. I mean, I don't know the math, but mathematically the quantum set might actually do more damage, but I didn't do the math myself, so I'm not gonna claim that as my, my take. When it comes to that, I do prefer the ice set, mainly because when I'm using her, I am using her against an enemy that is weak to ice. I'm not trying to use her against an enemy that is weak to quantum. If the enemy is weak to quantum, I'm going to use a quantum character. It would it'd have to be more a specific situation where they're weak to ice and quantum. And if you don't have Silver Wolf, then that's, that, that can be of a headache. So instead of putting myself in that situational um, scenario, I would just rather just put the ice set so she just always gets that advantage. But that's me. That is another option that you have. And if you can't get a four piece set, 
you can choose from these different two-piece sets and kind of interchange them the way you want. There's a two-piece um, ice set, there's a two-piece speed set, of course, and then there's a two-piece two-piece musketeer set, right? So you can do that too. That's a, those are options that you do have um, when it comes to the two-piece set. So you can mismatch them if you don't have a four-piece ice or four-piece quantum ready to go nice and kicking, then, then you can just interchange these two-piece sets and, and call it a day. I wouldn't go for any other four-piece set. Some people might just say, oh, I'm gonna put four-piece musketeer. She's not gonna be basic attacking, and if you're gonna go when it comes to the speed, you might as well just do the two-piece speed set. You get the same amount of speed, and it gives you a little bit more flexibility when it comes to what kind of, which, which um, relics you can use, and so on and so forth. So I'll just do the, the two-piece speed set um, in that case right there. Crit damage, body, most of you gonna be able to do that. You wanna have at least 20% crit rate on her, all right? Now, when I say at least 20%, I mean at least, all right? Because a lot of people, I know what they're gonna do. They're going to, you know, have their 50% crit rate. Is this enough? Or their, their, their 20, or their, their, their 10%? No, 20% is the least you should have, all right? You wanna have 20% at least, why? So you can activate your ruling arena set, number one right there. You just wanna have high crit, crit rate on her. I mean, granted, if you don't have it, you don't have it, that's okay. You know, it's not like you can't use her or anything like that. Just know that if I, if I go around, I'm looking for some support characters to use so I can get my dailies done. If I see you with your Jing Lu with less than 20% crit rate, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be upset. I ain't gonna do nothing about it because I can't. But I'm gonna be upset, all right? So make sure you guys got that 20% crit rate on her at least. You wanna have 20 to 50% crit rate on her, okay? No more than 50%, because anything past that is a waste, okay? So crit damage, body on her, which is awesome. I'm using speed boots. If you're using Orbanya, you may be able to use her with attack boots. I'm not gonna really talk about her teams and so on and so forth in, term, in this video. I might talk about that in a separate video, um, but I wanna use her with Tang Yun. If you wanna use Orbanya, you can use attack boots. Um, depends on how much speed you're getting the subsets too so on and so forth so attacker speed when it comes to that um and then for the two piece planar set you want to have ruling arena um ruling arena or inner south soto ruling arena is going to probably get net more damage for you right because she's doing most of her damage with her skill and this buffs her skill she her ult does do a lot of damage too her burst does do a lot of damage so inner south soto is going to do just fine also so Nurse Hal Soto was gonna be a good pick for her. So it interchanges sometimes. Same thing with Blade. Blade really wants ruling arena. But you know, he does do follow-up and ult damage. So, you know, I have him on Nurse Hal Soto because I have better stats for this. So whatever you have better stats for. For sub stats for the relics, you know, you want attack percent. So I'm gonna give you the order, right? When it comes to that. So you want crit damage the most for a substat. Then you want crit rate, right? Just so you can get enough. Because you still need a good amount of crit rate to get her up to 20. 50% uh, crit rate without with having a, a crit damage uh, body piece. You want to have her have 20 to 50% to, to um, when it comes to that. So you're still going to want some crit rate substats. You're going to want speed, speed substats, and you're going to want attack substats. In that order, the crit damage, crit rate, speed, attack percent. Those are going to be the, the priorities for you when it comes to her substats. And in terms of break effect, that's pretty useless on her. Like I have this piece right here. It has a break effect on it. Not gonna do anything. Not really gonna do much. It's gonna increase the damage of like the when you break a little bit, but like that is like negligible. If you if you get a uh, break effect um, substats, that is a loss. Those are the, so that's it when it comes to her relics. When it comes to her relics, what stats you're looking for, so on and so forth when you're trying to prep that. And then when it comes to eidolons, well, hmm, the prep for eidolons, just get stellar jades. I mean, if we, what else, else can you do, you know? I mean, she does have some good um, early Eidolons and stuff. She does have overall good Eidolons. That's worth a topic on its own right there, um, in terms of that, whether you want to get her, her her light cone or get Eidolons, so on and so forth. That'll take more in-depth discussion. And I'm already I'm already going quite a long, long time talking about this for the comes to the preps. But I'm excited for her, so it's all worth it. It is all worth it in the end. To when it, when it comes to talking about her, I'm excited, all right? And for those of you who are excited, um, I just want to make sure that you guys had your necessary things that you need in order to prep for her um, because the hype for her is going to be at all time high. So let me know what you guys think. For those of you who are getting Jing Liu, how prepared are you? What you got waiting for? I want to hear it. Uh, leave it down in the comments down below. Like the video if you like the content. 
and subscribe to the channel so you get more content like this. With that, I'll end it there. Let you know.